Good evening, I'm Simon Dello and this is Late Edition. Tonight it's become the battle for the Blue Mountains, a desperate bid to save homes from the flames as Sydney remains a city ringed by fire. And is it bad medicine? Pharmacists say deregulation could put the public at risk. The Pharmacy Guild is outraged that the government's chosen the holiday season to announce proposed law changes allowing non-pharmacists to own pharmacies. The Guild says government deregulation will see the end of the community pharmacy as we know it. Jackie Hudson has more. Disappointment for pharmacists around the country following news the government plans to deregulate pharmacy ownership. Governments have, have looked at deregulation for decades now, but each successive government has come to the conclusion that the benefits are with pharmacy ownership. And this, without consult consultation, is very disappointing indeed. But the Health Ministry says it wasn't an attempt to avoid public debate and that the proposed law changes are designed to reduce medication errors. So this should free up the pharmacists to do what they're trained to do, which is to provide high quality um, pharmaceutical services to patients about their medicines. But the Pharmacy Guild isn't convinced. They say the public should be concerned. Well, we've been seeking reassurance from the minister that she was not going to do this. She had told us that there was no intention from the Labour Party to deregulate pharmacy. But a few days ago, the proposed changes were posted on Health Minister Annette King's website, angering pharmacists across the country. I just worry about whether the caring chemist that you know in New Zealand now will disappear from the map just as many of the good things of New Zealand life, in my opinion, have disappeared over the last decade or two. Even those new to the industry have doubts. One pharmacy intern says she will leave the country if the proposed law changes are implemented. If I was an employee of someone who was not a pharmacist, things like accounting, money, um, and you know, bulk buying power, all those kind of issues would come in and become more important than getting the right drug to the right person. And what does this all mean for the consumer? Yeah. The proposed changes are that pharmacies can be located alongside primary health organisations or as part of primary health organisations or other places um, like supermarkets. The government says it has consulted with both the Pharmacy Guild and the New Zealand Pharmaceutical Society last year. And they will be given a further opportunity to comment on the proposed changes next February. 500 people returned to the Mount Wellington Panmure RSA today, nearly three weeks after three of its members were bludgeoned to death. Two South Auckland men have been charged with murder, but as Lisa Glass discovered, there was still anger at today's emotional ceremony. Lifting the tapu from the scene of a crime that shocked the country. Murdered President Bill Absalom, Wayne Johnson and Mary Hobson have been denied the Christmas celebrations they would have shared with these club members. Susan Couch is still seriously ill. Great has been the loss. And great has been the outpouring of grief and associated hostility. The rededication has reclaimed the Mount Wellington Pamuir RSA for the community. Today we gather with the particular task of blessing this club, now it has been released to us once more, and dedicating this club to the purpose for which it was set up. It took courage to return. Many members hadn't wanted to venture back, especially those still feeling the losses most keenly. Well, earlier on I said, no way will I come back here. But then one of my friend's sister, sister I call her, said to me, that you better go back to you have to go back here, yeah? otherwise the, the uh, murderers will say, well, they have won. Despite the prayers, there were no tears for those charged with the murders. RSAs around the district and nationwide are urging stiffer penalties for murderers, and general consensus is at least 50 years jail with hard labour before parole must be considered. The three dead had been working in the club rooms when they were killed almost three weeks ago. They've been given the same honour as the war fallen. Beyond today's service, there are other signs of solidarity. RSAs across the country are collecting for victims' families. Already in Auckland alone, they've raised $25,000. It'll never bring the uh, people back, that's for sure, but uh, hopefully it'll relieve them in some way. Club members are now battling to nurture a community spirit sorely tested by the murder of three comrades.
Infighting within our defence forces has been exposed in a report by the State Services Commission. The report found 30 instances of information leaks since 1998 and blamed a small number of army officers. But the report does not name those responsible. Kareen Ambler with more. Fighting talk from the defence chief today. We have to, uh, to root it out and sort it out so we can get a good clean start early in the new year. How he plans to do this isn't clear. This first major report on problems within the Defence Force has found 30 probable leaks since 1998. Inappropriate behaviour by a small group, mainly Army officers, and that most leaks came from two competing factions of the Army. Opposition MPs say the report doesn't go far enough. Oh, I'd like to see the combat air wing brought back. I'd like to see the LAV-3 purchase cancelled. And I'd like to see all parties agree that our military are special and they should be properly funded. The report says there was a plot to undermine Army boss Major General Morris Dodson because he supported the government's defence policy. The MP whose files were illegally accessed is pleased with the report. I feel totally vindicated because the, the things that I have been telling both the former Minister of Defence, Max Bradford, and the current Minister of Defence, Mark Burton, and which have been totally ignored, are now there in black and white for the public of New Zealand to see. The report authors were unable to find out who was responsible for the leaks, but they say the incoming Defence Chief must find them, remove them, or neutralise them, and that his success in this mission should be tied to his performance review. Meanwhile, the Defence Minister says he's confident new Defence Chief Bruce Ferguson will deal with the troublemakers. This conduct is absolutely intolerable from this government's point of view, as I know it is to the Chief of Defence Force, will not be tolerated. Two more reports are still to come. A QC's report on the politicisation of the Army and a review of Defence's organisation and structure. And those last two reports are due to be released in the next two months. Fires across the Tasman show no sign of letting up and the weekend forecast is grim. It's feared the Royal National Park, the world's second oldest, will be totally burnt out. Flames have come within 15 kilometres of Sydney's suburbs, but a major battle's brewing to the west in the lower Blue Mountains, where the worst fire is threatening several towns. As Channel 9 reports, some have already succumbed to the flames, while others prepare to fight. No amount of backburning could stop this spot fire in Springwood from flaring up this afternoon. Threatening homes, residents worked tirelessly filling up buckets as firefighters took control of the blaze. Some trying to escape the heat. One fireman fighting the blaze was left injured. He suffered only minor injuries. For residents of Yellow Rock, who've already endured the flames, scorched earth was all that remained of backyards. And with no fire crews or water pressure, Mark Barton was convinced his house would end up the same. We were engulfed, totally engulfed. This was the fireball captured on home video that raged towards the residents of Singles Ridge Road on Boxing Day. Mark's house escaped, however his neighbours was left in ashes. Over the road, the blaze wiped out the back of several properties. 21 years of being a mechanic and, you know, it's just all, all trash now. With today's favourable weather conditions, fire crews use the time as productively as possible, preparing for what's expected to be a horror weekend. In Warramu, bulldozers were brought in to cut a fire break for homes between Glenbrook and Woodford. We feel like the um, cavalry's arrived. <laughs> it's wonderful. Firefighters say this operation is absolutely essential if winds pick up over the weekend. There's a fire burning three kilometres away in the Blue Mountains National Park, and it has the potential to threaten hundreds of homes with a 25 kilometre fire front. The Blue Mountains residents can be assured uh, that there will be so many fire engines there that they will barely be able to get to their driveways. But Jenny Gardner isn't taking any chances. She's packed up her life and is ready to leave if she has to. You start to feel the grief and you start to think, oh gosh, what if we lose everything? And you know, and you see the people who have lost everything and it really is distressing. So that, that gets to you, but then you sort of come back with the next day, we got through, okay, let's fight. <laughs> Police say arson is to blame for most of the fires and so far five people have been arrested. And there's controversy over a decision to release three 15-year-olds whose punishment is likely to involve meeting victims of the fires. Meanwhile, 19-year-old Alan Pascoe has been charged with lighting a fire near Parliament House in Canberra after a passing motorist made a citizen's arrest. Still overseas and US authorities are poring over the latest video from Osama bin Laden to find clues to his health or location. Channel 9's Michael Usher has the latest. 
Cowering behind blankets, injured Al-Qaeda fighters, weak, disgraced, but keeping their mouths shut, if they do know his state of being, they're not revealing Osama bin Laden's location. Today, more of the most recent propaganda tape was revealed. Bin Laden claims the end of America is near and that terrorism will continue whether he is dead or alive. Confusing the search for Osama, Afghanistan's new defense minister said the terrorist was hiding in Pakistan under the protection of this extremist Muslim group, the JUI, but its leader said the claim was a lie. Afghanistan's new Prime Minister later denied his government knew bin Laden's whereabouts. We don't know. Wherever he is, we should arrest him. The Pentagon, however, says daily it's patiently dealing with at least a dozen false find Osama theories. We do know of certain knowledge that he is either in Afghanistan or in some other country or dead. Meanwhile, U.S. Marines overnight arrested 20 Arab fighters loyal to Al-Qaeda. The U.S. has 45 people in its temporary prisons, and space is becoming a problem. So the Pentagon announced today it will soon transfer prisoners all the way to Cuba to be held at the Guantanamo Bay military base. And tonight, the Afghani officials are demanding the United States halt its bombing. A defence ministry spokesman said almost all remaining border hideouts of the Taliban and Osama bin Laden have been destroyed. And following the suicide attacks in America, New York Mayor Rudolph Giuliani has turned around his flagging popularity. Now Time Magazine's Person of the Year is stepping down after serving the maximum eight years in office. Giuliani's been hailed for his calm and courageous leadership following the attacks. Today he gave his farewell address at a church near Ground Zero. We have to be able to create something here that enshrines this forever and that allows people to build on it and grow uh, from it. We've got to think about it from the point of view of a soaring, beautiful memorial. Giuliani's future is secure, though. He's just signed a book deal worth more than $7 million. Just ahead on Late Edition, telecom customers are to pay more for line rental and toll calls. And we catch up on tennis with the bookies' favourite for the ASB Bank Classic.